Good afternoon, good evening, welcome to Hands On SAP Dev with me this time, DJ. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me, Q Macro. So, good morning, one and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Good morning to Luis already with the coffee. Good morning to, <coughs> to you, Helmut. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, my goodness me. Good morning to Helmut in Braunschweig in Brunswick. I, I have. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I have um yeah, I have beaten my cold. It's been a pretty bad virus and I've still got a bit of a cough. And this is really the first time I've said any words this morning. So it always sort of um conjures up a little bit of a cough in the morning. So anyway, anyway. So uh yeah, welcome one and all. This has been so much chat, it's already scrolled up the screen. So if I miss saying good morning to everybody, I've got I've got it up here actually. Who who else is here? Uh, good morning to Helmut. Good morning, Antonio. And good morning, Vitali. Although I shouldn't be really saying good morning if you're drinking that sort of coffee. To answer your question, I'm drinking uh, some Miriam Perez Natural. Um, Antonio and I are real coffee freaks. And uh, yeah, so I've got my hands on SAP Dev mug, OAuth at 8 a.m. And I'm all ready to go. Good morning to Ian Stubbings and Steen VD and Angelo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Ian. Uh, and so, Ian, this is also why I've not been really uh, appearing on Strava recently, because I've been really laid low by this um, this lurgy. Uh, nice animation. So, um, we have our good friend Nico Schönteich, uh, our, our friend and colleague in the Developer Advocates team, <coughs> to thank for that, as as also for these uh, lovely backgrounds as well. So amazing. Kiara, good morning. And Saqib, good morning. Uh, Sampath, good morning. Jonathan Klotz, good morning. Tom, good morning. Manu G and Rohan and Ajay and Joseph and Stefano. My goodness me, Maria Perez, great coffee from Honduras. Yes, it is indeed, it is. And good morning, oh, good morning, Christoph uh, in Bielefeld. Um, I won't make any jokes about, uh, you know, the, the fact that Bielefeld doesn't exist or something. I, I don't quite get that thing, but anyway, anyway, good morning. Uh, so, in fact, talk of the devil, as they say, Nico is in the house. So yes, everybody, uh, I don't know whether you saw that, Nico, but, um, People were praising uh, how cool that sort of um, countdown uh, intro was. Yes, so there we go. So we're back. Um, we're back with a vengeance. And uh, yeah, we're going to carry on from where we left off last week. So just as a reminder, if you're if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Um, thank you. You've, you've, you've heard it way too often already. Yes, I guess you would have done. I guess you would have done. So um, did you go to the Code Jam? uh no wait a minute uh the code jam in bielefeld last week 
Um, I was supposed to be there, but I was ill, so I couldn't travel. But Nico uh, uh, held that. That was awesome. Thank you. Uh, Manu, you're excited to get started. So am I. And uh, Joao. Is that how you pronounce it? Joao? Joao? I'm sorry. Tell me. Ah. Uh, good morning, Intias. Good morning and welcome, Intias Alam. So let's get started. Let me switch to the main scene already. Um, well, in fact, I've shared already, I'll share it again actually, I've shared already the um, SAP developer news. And uh, so check that out later on. Um, and um, one thing I, I did just before was sort of recreate uh, the, the container uh, for our cap B2B uh, code jam sort of uh, shenanigans. And I noticed actually, I recreated the container and I um, went in here and said CDS V, CDS version. And all of a sudden, it's like Christmas has come early. All of a sudden we have a new version of the CDS DK 7.6. No, <coughs> <coughs> Christoph, uh, yes, you were in Gutterslow. Yes, yes, I, so I thought I recognized your name. Yes, Vitaly says that Gen AI says, while some coffee enthusiasts may prefer blah, 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 it's convenient and widely consumed option for those looking for a quick and easy coffee solution. I'm not even going to comment on that, my tally. I'm not even going to comment. Daniel Schlachter in the house. Oh, my goodness me. We have some uh, wonderful people. Everybody. Petter, hello to you in Prague. Antonio, clearly AI doesn't know anything about coffee. I think that's a good comment. Okay, so, um, I, yeah, like I said, I was noticed that we have uh, CDSDK <coughs> 7.6 suddenly. And that's because, you know, um, I rebuilt the container. And because Cap B2B, B2B uh, because I rebuilt the container, um, in the rebuilding, sorry, rebuild the container image. Let's get the, uh, the terminology right. Uh, the image definition in the Docker file says, go and install, let me make that a little bit bigger, go and install CDSDK. So we install it fresh from NPM. And as you can see, published two days ago, bleeding edge, we are now on 7.6.0. Now, normally, only a few days later, we get some awesome release notes relating to that. So again, this is this is sort of just making you aware of you know the, the cadence of cap releases and where to find information. You know, this is what I keep I keep my eye on this in terms of you know what's the latest release, 7.6. I can check in the release notes. Now the release notes here in, in the cap in the capira uh, is not Vladimir, Vladimir, and welcome to you. Uh, welcome, thank you for the stickers, Vladimir says. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. I'm running out of stickers, so if anybody else wants any stickers. Send me a uh, you know private message somehow on uh, Mastodon or on LinkedIn with a postal address. I can send some, but I'm running out. So you know if you want some, get in there. Um, so we can see the sort of the cadence now. Very shortly, we should see the release notes for January 2024, which basically sort of you know align to this new 7.6 release. Anyway, we're not going to look into all the new release features right now. Normally in SAP Developer News, we talk about the new release. So, you know, look out for that in the Developer News if you want to. So that's that. That's that. Uh, let's get rid of that. And we can oh, well, leave that there for now. So what I uh, what I wanted to do was just to finish off where we left off last time, because so many brilliant questions. So ask questions all the time. Give me your opinions. Ask questions. No question too basic, too simple. Where we were last time was we were we installed the Lint plugin or the the add-on. Let's call it and not plugin. That's, that's an overloaded word in in, in cap terms. But um, but so what I'll do is I'll recreate uh, and we'll do it in one in one go, right? And then we'll we'll have a look at, quickly at the linting thing, which we sort of you know got distracted and didn't finish off at the end. And then we'll go into CDS Watch if that's all right. So ask questions, comment. Directors to say whatever you want in the chat because that's why what makes it even better. So see this, see this in it, um, and we also added the uh, tiny sample from Elton John, um, but also we'll add at the same time the lint mechanism, which you know we added that separately last time. Book shop, uh, and then we'll also go into that uh, directory once everything's done, right? Um, so as you can see here, yes, as you can see, it's adding feature Node.js. We didn't ask for Node.js, but if you look in the source code, remember uh, last episode, we did a bit of a search on the CDSDK, the globally installed CDS development kit, and we found where the Jane Eyre basic data came from. In a similar way, you can find out why it will default to add uh, the Node.js feature. Okay, you know, just so it's all, you know, the source is there for us to look at and understand. It's added the tiny sample, which is basically, you know, a little a little book 
uh, entity and a couple of records and then exposing that book entity through a service catalog service and we also added feature lint which then asks us do we want to install for example um, uh, code package.json uh, if we want to install um, these two things eslint plugin the actual cap specific cds plugin for eslint and eslint itself and then what we did was we had a quick look at one of the rules one of the linting rules that basically said you're not allowed to have let's open uh the uh data model uh oh not, not code uh there we go i quite like sort of saying open it with with text right this is quite good um so what we did was we added a dollar prefix to you know a property name uh because that is not really something we should be doing and that's what we want lint to be catching and so what i did then was let me go to there what we did then was let me put my face down the bottom maybe uh with a cds lint and we said dot which is basically lint everything in you know in this in this location which is this directory we could actually leave that off it's the same thing we did a debug but we won't do the debug now and what we got uh were two error messages uh or sorry two what cds lint oh uh, what 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 oh i've not saved it ah whew, whew, whew. uh save uh there we go uh there we go uh, that's better that's better do it again dj cds lint i've actually set my i think vs code by default I don't know let me know in the chat vs code by default will auto save after a few seconds i don't like that because i like to be in control of what happens when especially with cds watch as we'll see so this is saying ah yeah okay and these are cap specific lint rules that we've you know uh hit upon warning dollar title is prefixed with a dollar sign that is this the rule that we looked at last week and also, of course, because we've sort of, you know, changed the name of this property, it's also, it can and will also lint other file types, e.g. We've got linting CDS files here, data model CDS, and it will also lint CSV files. How amazing is that? So, in fact, also, we can, you know, we can sort of, uh, what's it called, command click or control click on there, and it will take us directly to the offending part of that file. Similarly here, click, take it us to the directly the offending part of that file and of course the reason why that is no good anymore is because there isn't a title property right of course if we fix the the actual title property by removing that then of course we've linked it again it goes away okay so that is that so um antonio Mario, uh, antonio says i don't have that setting on good no neither do i so what i want to do today um is sort of explore um running stuff okay what do i mean by running stuff so cds um, is an all-round tool you know both for um runtime but we're not really talking about runtime right now we're talking about and i'm going to say design time i've said this before i'm going to say desi uh, design time thank you antonio for sharing that disable auto save um i've got auto save disabled um it's a design time tool as well it comes in the cds dk and of course the design time tool allows us to say cds add etc right uh dot dash dash help <coughs> but it's also the server okay so it's also basically the thing that that fires up uh express fires up all the cds all the, all the cap runtime libraries and starts serving the stuff that you've defined okay now you may or may not have seen different ways that uh tutorials blog posts whatever describe saying oh yeah write this cds and blah 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 and then run it with <coughs> <coughs> run it with the following command so cds run is one of those commands okay cds run will do something now we're gonna we're gonna stare at these individual log lines and make sure we understand all of these things during the course of this uh particular episode so don't worry about you know all of the different log lines here we're going to make sure we sort of you know have, have stared at them and understand what each one is talking about now cds run if we say cds run dash dash help basically it says cds run and this you'll find this a lot with um with cap uh, cap you know uh convention over configuration grow as you go these two related bits of philosophy also extend into 
what came, I, th I, would, I would argue, came from the, uh, the Pearl community. Uh, Dwim, do what I mean. You know, just, just do what you, you know what I want you to do. Just do it. Okay, so if you say CDS run, it actually is syntactic sugar, a convenient shortcut. It de-sugars into, I was listening to this fantastic um, uh, podcast uh, yesterday, an interview with Simon Peyton Jones, you know, uh, uh, father of Haskell and uh, Verse and amazing functional programming brain. Anyway, anyway, uh, he, he said this word, you know, this, this syntax de-sugars, because Haskell is quite a small language sort of uh, at its core, but it's got lots of sort of, uh, syntactic sugar around it and you know when when it's compiled uh the, you know the, the syntactical sugar is you know reduced down to is de-sugared so i just love that word de-sugar so you can almost think of you know cds run de-sugaring into cds serve so we can actually say cds serve and it does the same thing cds serve like that okay and that's going to just pick up all of the services it can find now as a keyword all of the services it can find where is it looking for these services right anybody in the chat can suggest where they think it's looking for these services one of the clues is here we're loaded model from two files but we're going to dig into that a little bit more okay so put in the chat what you think i say the chat there they've got the chat up here and i've got a chat down there so i don't know what to look at i don't know what's going on um so cds serve now um if we look at CDS serve help, ooh, see, we get all this stuff here. What can we serve? CDS serve, oh, all this amazing stuff here. CDS serve, you can specify a service name to serve. We can specify where we want, you know, from what models we want it to be served. The default is asterisk, all. All these different things, we're gonna be looking at mocks, we're gonna look at it with mocks, in memory, all these different things over the, uh, this, this episode and maybe the next episode as well. But you can see CDS serve, CDS serve all, CDS serve catalog service, right? Now, if we have a look here, we've got in our, and don't worry about remembering these different directories for now, we'll come to that in a second. But in, in here, we've got this file, this CDS file called cat service, right? It doesn't matter what it's called actually, because it's in a certain directory. But inside there, we've got this service called catalog service. So if we, we can also say, uh, shall I, Tell you what, let's let's um, make that. Shall I make a one smaller? There we go. Let me know, Helmut. You're always good at telling me whether it's uh, big or small enough. Let me know if it's um, uh, still large enough to see. Good day, Phil. Yo, don't worry about arriving late. You're ar arriving in style. Um, you've missed uh, not really that much. We just finished off the linting from last time, and now we're starting to look at how to fire up a cap server. Okay. Uh, we looked at CDS run, which is basically syntactic sugar of CDS serve, CDS serve all. Now, if we say CDS serve banana, right? Okay, so what it's done is it said, okay, well, I'm loading these these models from, you know, and when, it, when we say model, when it says model here, it basically means, de you know, set of definitions. It doesn't necessarily mean model as in the word model in data model. It loads services as well, okay? Um, and it loads them from, it's loaded from this file and this file. Again, put in the chat why you think it's found stuff in these files. You know, where does it, where does it know to look? And what is it looking for? But we're saying here, CDS serve banana, error, no such service, banana. Okay. Now, if we were to add service banana, let's just put, uh, I don't know, entity foo, can we, uh, can we get a key ID integer? That'll do for now. Um, service banana. I'm not sure I need a semicolon there. Let's just try, try that again. CDS serve banana. There we go. Okay. <coughs> now, what have we done there? We've basically added, in, just happens to be inside this cat service file. It doesn't matter. It could have been a separate file. We've added a service called banana. So it's now said, oh yeah, okay. I've found, you know, I'm loading. I'm still loading the definitions from everywhere <coughs> that I can find but you want me to only serve the banana service. By the way, I don't know whether Joe Blow, Joe Blow I think would remember. Joe is a good friend of the uh, uh, of the hands-on SAP dev family. Uh, and he will remember that uh, in, in my previous consulting days, uh, my, my test word is banana. So banana is just you know, a random word like foo. Um, 
so serving banana now if we have a look at that let me open that uh, let me close that one there and put that back uh here so we can see uh let's put that there so it's on the other side there we go ah oh, now okay let's do that shall i put that down there actually uh how do we do that down there down there that's it that's better okay so we can sort of see everything now is my face still at the bottom yes it is at the bottom so you can see that the service endpoint list only has the banana service okay if we were to say for example um cds serve and then just nothing else which is the same as cds serve all then it's going to load the same things and serve catalog service which is that one and also banana now if we refresh this thing here we should see the two service endpoints okay so you can have multiple services being served by the same cap server you can have multiple services defined wherever you want in separate files in in the same file in this case but nobody else has put yet um, somebody have a guess as to where the cap server might decide to look as to where to load these models okay so let's let's have a look at start staring at these different log records okay so we have and also also you, you may have noticed quite nicely i think now this is you know i'm going to make a generalized statement this is just dj speaking here i mean you know i grew up in the mainframe days i you know my first job after university was <coughs> running sap r2 systems on ibm mainframes where it was just the most amazing environment in terms of the operating system and error messages and the way they were documented and every error message had an id and a severity and you could go and look it up in these huge manuals and everything it's not the same now it will never be as good but one thing i do like about this is that we have these sort of little prefixes these little sort of contexts so you can see that actually there are different components to the cap server the thing that you start up with cds run or cds serve we haven't done cds watch yet we'll do that in a minute um that uh, then you can sort of you know uh, increase or decrease the the verbosity of the logging so we could say for example um, i think debug ooh, bug equals cds now that uh cds serve that um uh oh da, 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 debug equals cd um actually there's a different way of there's a different way of doing it um there we go well, there's all sorts of debug is all yeah, yeah okay Let, let's let's get into debugging later but you can sort of increase the verbosity of all these different things so there for example you can see uh, there's another sort of component in the server that's now you know suddenly logging because we've turned debug on why is it so warm in here because uh, we turned debug on um and there's another component the trace component and what else have we got here anything else is of interest here cds service factory oh my goodness what is that um you know all these different things sql component so you know we could do a whole episode on you know looking at how we can help ourselves to find out what's going on but for now let's just run cds serve like that so it's loaded these models loaded definitions from two files serve cat service and db data model now notice something that antonio said models go under the db folder right and services under serve folder any mock data under db data perfect so antonio that's a great start now convention over configuration but there is configuration that sort of determines what antonio has just said so let me make this a little bit bigger in fact i think you can oh never mind i'll just do like that okay um let me make that there now cds env i think we touched on this last time didn't we uh, cds env will give us the what's the word i'm looking for the uh the calculated the the effective environment configuration there's all sorts of settings that have default values convention over configuration really important but also the things that you can change so if we say cds env it will give us a ton of information now we don't want to look through all this different stuff here but what we can say for example is and this is this is i think yeah when we when we looked last time we looked at the value of this special sort of environment variable or the cds environment cds environment variable 
underscore home underscore CDSDK, which is the location of the actual CDS development kit. That's where we found to look for files when we were trying to figure out where Jane Eyre came from, right? Uh, Lumith, good morning, amazing live. Congratulations, congratulations to everybody here for joining and being a part of the team. So, uh, so we've got CDS env. So if we say CDS env get, okay, the CDS env get, let's just do help, help you get help with everything. Okay, you can do all sorts of different things here. If we say CDS env get, and I'm gonna just do one folders, right? Folders, bear with me. Check it out, check it out. You can also say, say CDS env list folders. You get a slightly different sort of properties format output, okay? So, you know, choose your poison. I quite like CDS env get because actually when it knows it's emitting to a terminal, it's gonna sort of, you know, put it in a, a sort of a human readable style bit of JSON. It's not really JSON, but if you pipe it, if it's not in the context of a terminal, it's actually JSON, which is really cool. So let's stare at that for a second. CDS env get folders. These are the default folders that the CAP server will look in when it's starting up. It will look in these folders, and it just so happens, of course, you know, it makes sense to have the defaults to be the same name as the folder names, you know, the, the same name as the sort of semantic names here. Let's call them DB server app, right? Remember, as Antonio said as well, DB is where you define your data models, as in your lower, you know, persistence layer stuff. Serve is where you define your services, and app is where you can put, you know, sort of, you know, front end, you know, human facing, you know, uh, HTML5 things, okay, front ends. However, you don't have to do it like that, okay, and one of the beauties of CDS, the language, and one of the beauties of CAP is that you can mix and match and define what, where, how, whatever you want, okay, so we're going to explore that a little bit. Now, there's also, as well as these this folders um, property, you can also say roots, okay? This is like a getter. And this will combine the values of the folders with two sort of fixed hard-coded names for files, okay? So we could say, for example, I mean, it'd be crazy to say, but we could say, we could say CDS config. We can, there's all different ways of effect, affecting this CDS effective environment, the effective configuration. So we could say CDS config uh, equals, let's say, um, fold, you have to specify obviously uh, folders uh, like that. And then we could say here, DB, the DB folder, um, actually, or the DB semantic folder is in a folder called um, Apple, you know, on the fruit, banana thing, Apple, like that, right? Let's see what happens there when we do that. Uh, let's close that, close that, close that, CDS and get folders. So now we are setting on the fly through the setting of a, a value for this CDS config special environment variable, we're sort of overriding the default value for the DB semantic folder, okay? So now we could say, see, oh, let's, well, see what happens, I don't know, see what happens, CDS run, or serve, serve. It's also, ah, okay, it's, uh, the folder's DB Apple, but it's also looking in DB because the effective configuration also includes DB. Now, instead of putting things in these different um, directories, let's let's go back and start from scratch and have nothing. Okay. So what we do is go into here. Let's close everything, close all, and say remove uh, all bookshop. Right. Blast everything away. So we've got nothing at the moment apart from dev container. Now, why don't we say CDS um, in it? Uh, simple, okay? We won't add the tiny sample. So we'll say CDS init simple. Now, go into simple, and what have we got? In fact, I'd like to see a tree. There we go. What we've got is the simplest thing that could possibly work, is it? No, it's not, right? We could actually remove, remove rmd app db and serve. 
now all we've got is literally all right we've got some helper files here in fact that's tree is it minus a to see all of the yeah there we go well, that's better i think this is much nicer display than that okay so anyway so what we've got is what we looked at on episode one cdsrc eslintrc git ignore we know what they are so we can sort of discount those read me a little bit of a you know markdown documentation file fine vs dot vs code that's the sort of vs code specific helper files to you know do cool things with vs code and cap but apart from that we have nothing all we've got the, the most important file what we've got here is the package json okay so what happens if we say cds serve now oops cds serve error couldn't find a cds model for asterisk in workspaces cap to be main simple now this is where in order to resolve this i would like with you to move on from cds serve to because i'm running cds serve each time cds run cds serve all it's gonna make no difference because there's nothing there we you know we didn't have signed a tiny sample we haven't even got a db folder an app folder a serve folder nothing but remember cds env get roots we have the possibility of putting things in folders with these names or for example putting something in a file called schema.cds or services.cds okay so one of the really cool things about cap and cds in general in the node.js environment in this particular case but also in a similar way in the java environment is that the development cycle for us as developers is so tight and designed to be as helpful as we oh you can hear the bird chirping excellent yes divine designed to be as helpful to you as a developer in the design time figuring out things bashing your head against the wall what's going on here let me try and change this etc etc as possible and for that we have cds watch now if we say cds watch help so we've got, we've got cds run go and run the stuff which is syntactic sugar for cds serve go and serve the stuff and we've seen that cds serve is going to say well there's nothing to serve and then goes bang so think of cds run or cds serve more specifically i suppose as a as a, as a more of a runtime invocation but we're in design time we're still developing right we haven't developed anything yet and for design time we have another command in our cds arsenal called cds watch and if we say cds watch help we get a ton of stuff but if we scroll up let's just read this okay tell cds to watch for relevant things to come or change in the specified project okay by default it's the, you know the directory we're in or the current word directory compiles and reruns the server on every change detected Phil Cooley says, maybe a future session DJ would be to cover Java Cap. I know it's not used much, but some recent projects I'm working on have required knowledge of Java Cap. So Phil, I think um, either the previous episode or the previous to that one, um, this also came up. I'm not a Java person, but I do know some awesome Java people in the Cap team here at SAP. So what I've said was once we sort of get through, you know, this back to basics with Cap Node.js, we'll we'll hopefully get some Java people on and we'll do a bit of that. How would, how would that work? Um, I hope for that work, that'll be okay. Ah, good morning, have yay. Good morning to my everyone and a special thanks to DJ. Blah, 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 blah. Great, welcome. So, oh, time is 8.33. So, compiles and reruns a server on every change detected. Amazing. So if anybody has used, a, you know, a live reload facility, there's one in Node.js that was created by Remy Sharp. I can't remember what it's called. Is it called Live Reload? I can't remember. Uh, anyway, it's a similar sort of thing, but better. So actually, CDS Watch is just a convenient shortcut for CDS Serve All with mocks and in memory. Now we're going to maybe look at with mocks and in memory later on when we start staring at all the different log output to understand what they do. No worries, Phil. Thank you for asking. Brilliant. Keep your questions coming. Any question, any question. I might not be able to answer it, but there we go. So what we'll say is cds watch 
And remember, we've got, in fact, let's have, let's have another terminal down here. Ah, there, right. Remember that we've got basically no CDS definitions whatsoever. We haven't even got a DB server or app directories, right? So CDS watch, let's see what happens. In fact, let's get rid of that. that. Enter. Oh, look at that. Now, I love this because it sort of allows us to stop and stare and think about what the heck is going on. So first of all, it says, this is actually what I'm doing for you. CDS serve all with mocks in memory, question mark, which is what the help told us it was doing. And <coughs> it'll set up a live, you know, if we were in a certain, um, you know, browser um, URL here, it would it would do that. However, nothing's being served. So this is going to sort of spin for a while. So let's stop that now. OK, no, thank you, Chanaika. Uh, sorry, uh, Chanakia. Thank you, Chanakia. Exactly. It's Node Mom. Well remembered. Good call there. Good call. So um, that's the one. That's the uh, the mechanism from Remy Sharp. I think originally the CAP project was using Nodemon um, when they first came up with this brilliant idea of uh, you know having this really tight development cycle. Anyway, no models found in DB serve app schema or services. So now we've looked at. We'll open another terminal. See, I'm, I'm still not used to sort of using VS Code. It's just like too complicated for me. Um, if we say CDS, now we've looked at CDS env. Let's do ls for a change. ls roots, right? We now understand what the heck that means, right? We know that it's looking for things. Where is it looking for things? It's looking for things defined in this roots um, property. And the roots property, as we know, is made up of hard-coded word schema and a hard-coded word services which is then you know the file name services.cds and schema.cds plus the values for these folders which we can change but anyway let's not go into that but we got rid of the folders <coughs> and we don't have anything so if we were to say touch which is basically in you know in any normal operating system will create a file <coughs> a touch um banana.cds okay now <coughs> Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Hold on. Uh, remove banana.cds. Go into simple. There we go. Uh, and let's just show you that CDS and fo the folders are the same. You know, it's configuration in this directory, in the in our project directory. It's the same. So if you say touch banana CDS. Oh, by the way, I've just noticed. Luis says, DJ, just confirm. You have removed the bookshop project and started a new project under the name simple. Yes, exactly. Thank you for pointing that out, Luis. In fact, I forgot myself. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I need to move it. Oh, tell you what. Rather than each, ah, that's a good point. Instead of doing that, let's go into here. Let's, let's blast away that project as well. And let's create a cap project in this cap B2B main, you know, in the main directory. So all we have to do is CDS in it and not give a project name. So it won't create a separate new directory. CDS in it, bang, creating new cap project in current folder. Adding feature Node.js, we didn't specify anything else to add with a dash dash add. So all it's done is done the default, which if you don't specify the runtime, it's going to pick Node.js as default. Go and find that in the CDSDK source code. It's, you know, it's quite easy to find. So there we go. Okay, so actually, Louis, um, uh, yes, that was the case. Now I've removed the bookshop and started a new project under the name Simple. Now I've started a new project in this current directory instead keep it, to keep it simple. So when I change and, you know, when I create a new um, what's it called? A new um, terminal. I'm, I'm already in the right directory. Okay, so let's do CDS watch. Okay, and if I say touch banana.cds, what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? What happened? CDS watch. The part of CDS watch that watches for changes and additions to content in the project directory in the current working directory noticed that's not you to mind i say noticed that oh R, uh, rf uh, app rm rmd let's remove app db and so the reason i'm using rmd instead of rm minus rf is to sort of prove to you that there's nothing in these directories right if you tried to do an rmd 
of a directory and it had stuff in it, it would say, uh -uh. but these directories are empty and we can prove that by saying, remove them. There we go, tree there, right? So all we've got is package JSON, readme and banana.cds. Touch banana, touch banana, Pew. yes. Um, <clears throat> so um, we've got nothing in banana, cat banana, uh, cat banana.cds, nothing in there. But it noticed that there's a new file. But this new file, even though it's a CDS file with a CDS extension, is not in the, either in the list of directories it's looking at, nor is it called schema.cds or services.cds. So why don't we say, times A for perfect, why don't we say move banana.cds to services.cds? What, what do you think is going to happen? <gasps> Now, let's move this down a bit. So we were there. <clears throat> and then it said, oh my goodness me, I found something. Loaded model from one file, services.cds. Remember before we, you know, we saw this loaded model from two files, serve slash catalog service.cds and db slash data model.cds, right? That's the result of it looking in the roots in db, serve, app, and looking for any files called schema.cds and services.cds. There's also a special file called index.cds, which we'll talk about another time. That's almost like a bit of an index.html in the old Apache uh, HTTPD days, where if it finds an index, index file, it will sort of show that. In fact, they're all, that, that tradition is also extant here in cap because if it finds an index.html file in the app directory it will serve that instead of serving the default this in fact um yeah uh, let's, uh, should we do digress on that one and if we now okay here we go yeah localhost let's open localhost here localhost 4004 yeah this t even this tells us something right even this tells us something these are the paths currently served. Web locations, none. Service endpoints, none, right? And this is the default sort of, you know, helper, helper HTML that you get. However, right, if we were, Daniel, uh, touch banana. If we were um, to say, uh, touch index.html, oh, sorry, make the, make DJ less, more haste, less speed. Make the app and touch app index.html now we've got of course it's not going to it's, it's not looking in the app folder here so let's just do that and do that again cds watch now look at that in fact cat into app index.html h1 banana h1 and then refresh that there we go there we go so basically you can control what comes out of the, the default cap server by putting stuff in the app directory, specifically index.html and everything flows from there. Anyway, that was a bit of a stupid digression. Um, but does that make sense? RM minus RF app. So I do need to do RM minus RF because there's something in app now. So get rid of that, get rid of that, press refresh, and now we're back to there. But we've still got nothing served, right? We've still got nothing served, but we get a different message. Loaded model from one file, services.cds. Let's open, let's open services code, services.cds, it's there. Uh, ooh, that's, uh, that'll do, actually. Yeah, that'll do. Um, but it says, no service definitions found in loaded models. So it's loaded some models from here, but there are no service definitions found waiting for some to arrive. So why don't we, give it one right now here's a brilliant opportunity for us to sort of reconnect our brains with the um the capire documentation so let's go there um chrome new new chrome put that there capire there now if we go to get started in episode one we went through all this stuff here, did we? No, we went to, we went on the preliminaries, jumpstart a project. <coughs> yeah, we've done that, yeah, code CDS watch. Um, and we also did the, where is it? Uh, we did the jumpstart project, jumpstart guide, jumpstart, yeah, here we go. We've done this, we've done the setup, okay? So that's where we are. But what I wanna show you is this hello world. Amazing, right? 
let's create a simple hello world o data, right? Going from zero to hero in about two seconds. Oh, so Rohan, hello, rcds, run cds, serve cds, watch to be found in sap cds. I guess how would we know where to find declaration of these commands functions in case some versions don't have command? Brilliant question, Rohan. Thank you for asking that question. That's a really good question. Think of it in this way, that cds run is just syntactic, isn't it? So let's ignore cds run for now. CDS serve basically starts the services, starts serving all the CDS definitions you've got. Okay. So that is valid for design time, but it's also valid for runtime. Okay. Would you want, for example, um, a linting tool in production? Would you want a tool that would do command completion for you in production? Would you want something that, I can't think of anything else, but would you want something, would you want some code that automatically look for changes to files and restarted the server? Would you want that in production? No. So we can sort of see the dividing line between these three commands, for example, CDS run, CDS serve, and CDS watch. CDS watch is not part of SAP CDS. It's part of SAP CDS DK. It's part of the development kit it's not part of the runtime, okay? Remember, if we say here, um, where are we? Uh, let's open another one of these, CDS V, CDS version. So CDS Watch is part of this. It's not part of this, okay? So if you look in the actual node modules and all the files and everything, you won't find a CDS Watch, or you know, it's actually watch.js and watched.js because they split it out for various asynchronous reasons. It's not in there, it's in there. Does that make sense, Rohan? It's a great question. And it's also really important to help us understand the difference between design time and runtime and the tools we need for design time and the tools we need for runtime. We've got to think as well about, you know, running things in the cloud and you know having the minimum surface area of code for security reasons, you know, uh, and so on. And, you know, it's always a lot more compact and, you know, quicker, et cetera, et cetera. It's all part of the same sort of story. Brilliant question. Now, I've completely forgotten what I was about to do. Uh, not your fault, Rohan, at all. It's just I've got a brain the size of a goldfish. Uh, waiting for models. Oh, services. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. So um, we were looking here. <coughs> Going from zero to hero. So let's define a service and let's define a function. Now, this is I love and I do find this a little bit strange as like a, a hello world, but it is a brilliant hello world because not everything is sort of O data shaped in the sort of the, the non orthogonal O data style. You know, I always think of functions and, and actions in O data, you know, those are two O data V4 things, as sort of orthogonal to the purity of O data, which is sort of restful. These are this, you know, a function and an action, even more so, in my humble opinion, are not restful. A sort of orthogonal to the whole restful style of what OData is, which is, you know, a small number of verb, a small number of nouns, uh, sorry, a small number of verbs, get, put, post, delete, or the OData operations, you know, create, read, update, delete, and query, and an infinite number of verbs, i.e. the URLs, the entity sets, the entities, whatever. Functions of action are different. However, I think it's still pretty cool to start with this, because why not, right? And also we can have some fun with it. So why don't we say, uh, in here, ooh, hello, 848. Uh, so we say um, service, um, well, let's, let's do this so we, can, we can, you can, so we can go back to this later. Service say, what's it say here? Service say, there, let's just save that first of all. Oh my goodness, right, we've got nothing in the service say. In fact, we don't even know, you know we don't even know, uh, don't even need. That's crazy, right? Service say, do we need that? We need that, right? Because it's, it's actually even telling us we need that. It's got a fantastic sort of a syntax thing. How oh, come my brain's not working? Mismatch end of file. I'm expecting something else, right? So give me something else. There we go. There's our sort of, you know, the body of our service definition. Let's save that. And we we now see that, for example, loaded model from one file, da -da 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 -da. okay. Oh, now now it's worth doing something. So we've got to do some auth. We'll look into these next time. Uh, I'm in Poland next week, so maybe it'll be a week after. But anyway, next time. But look at that, serving say, serving the service called say that it's found in this default services file. If I were to, again, just to just rub this in, to drive this home, if I were to say, move services to nothing.cds, right? That's gonna restart and say, no models found. Okay, so let's move it back again, move nothing to services, 
cds and it's now restarted and we're back again okay so now and look at that it's refreshed reload you know amazing don't lift a finger developers cap loves developers cap loves developers right there we have our service endpoint odata v4 say why is what's going on we haven't said anything about odata why does it say odata v4 say and why is there a dollar metadata there right can somebody tell me what time is 8 49 perfect we've got time for to pause because i know there's about 20 seconds delay why do we get this service endpoint that's slash odata slash v4 slash say let's have a look at it okay look at that amazing uh, an error occurred while serializing the service document cannot read properties of null one of the fantastic things is that you can break nothing nothing can go wrong in a disastrous sense all these error messages tell us something and help us learn about cap and about cds and about odata for that matter what this is saying is it's trying to serve us let's go there look it's trying to serve us a service document remember odata you know we're still trying to answer the question in the chat please somebody why does it give us slash odata slash v4 as a prefix you know why is it odata i mean you know it's a simple answer but let's just talk about it explicitly so because it's trying to serve this as odata this is our service document an odata service document basically is a list of entities but we we've done the most ridiculously stupid thing here and define nothing right we've defined nothing there's no entities, no nothing. So it can't give us, you know, a, a, a representation of the entities because there aren't any. Okay. Now, if we were to go back and look at the metadata document, there are two well-known documents in OData. This is the service document, which is looked, just looked at, which, which the CAP server has sort of failed to be able to create for us because, you know, how can it? And there's the metadata document, which is like, you know, the minimum thing ever, right? Um, so I can see somebody's uh, Chan, uh, Chanaika has put something. I'll, I, won't, I won't read that there. I'll look at it in a second. <coughs> Hopefully it's the answer. Um, so we, but we can see here, make that big bigger. Mm, mm, mm. We can see here that we get an OData metadata document. It's a version of OData v4. And we have basically a schema with a namespace say. There's nothing in it, right? But it's still valid metadata. Now, if we, oh, so, so Chanaika says, cap exposes protocol as default path. Exactly. So just as, for example, um, CDS init will default to Node.js because, you know, let's have a default. Um, also, I think it's fair to say that, you know, cap was designed primarily to be this amazing, and it is, uh, way to create OData services like that. It can also do other things, you know, um, but by default, it will serve OData. And since uh, CDS version 7, right, it will prefix the OData services with slash OData slash v4. So you can have different style. So for example, here, let's do this. Ooh, ooh, yes, that's a bit big. We could say at rest, we could say, Let's annotate this service with the rest at rest annotation. And now what happens? Loaded model from file, services, blah, 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 blah. Serving say path slash rest slash say. So all of a sudden, we're not serving an OData service anymore. We're serving like a, you know, a more generic restful API. Rest say, what happens? Bang, nothing, no entities, right? You know, what else could it do? Anyway, I think one of the one of the takeaways, and OData is the default, exactly, exactly, Chanaika. One of the one of the takeaways, hopefully you're taking away from this, um, Ramble, is that you should experiment because the CAP server and this this environment is just begging for you to find out by trying, learning by doing, right? Anyway, let's let's get rid of that um, uh, annotation. Let's get back to the OData service. And now let's finally add this other bit here, which is basically adding a function definition. Let me just copy paste that a little bit quicker, right? Let's go here, add that, bam, bang, save. So now we've got this function. Let's have a look at the metadata. 
entity container. It's got an entity container and it's got a function import. Okay, this is one of these new OData function imports. Um, can anybody tell me the difference between a function and an action in OData? Okay, I'll give you a bit of a clue. In fact, this documentation is going to give us a bit of a clue. I'll just jump down to run it. So we're already running CDS Watch. And if we go to localhost OData v4, say hello two equals world, which is basically invoking that function, let's just copy that link address. Let's go back to this page here instead. Let's open up a tab and do that. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Nice. We got to here. There was our get for the metadata. And then this line here from the OData component. Yeah, there's a log OData logging, right? It says, oh, okay, I'm about, I've just been, I've just received a request for this URL. OData v4 say hello to equals world. Now, if anybody remembers, oh, Nico says, actions modify data, functions don't. What a beautifully succinct way of saying it. And that's exactly correct, okay? So actions may have side effects, as in data gets modified on the server, right? Functions may not have side effects. And the implication of that in this RESTful context, and we're going a bit off piece with old days now, but anyway, is that you shouldn't be allowed, you can't, and CAP won't allow you to make a call to an action with the HTTP method GET, because GET implies uh, no side effects and idempotent, idempotency, okay? Um, I'll put some links in the description for this one, um, you know, when I go through it and, you know, write it up and everything to those different things. But basically, you should be able to call a function with get. You can't call an action with get. You have to use post because using the, word, the, the, the HTTP method post implies semantically that you are ready for, expecting, wanting you're going into a contract with the server that may or may not bring about a side effect, a change in data. That's that's the semantics of post. Similar to put, but you know, let's not go there. So the fact that it's trying to handle this request tells us that it's a function. Okay, tells us that there's no side effects, tells us that cap is doing the right thing because we've defined it as a function rather than an action. If we want to define an action there, we do that. And in fact, I don't think that was going to work. Yeah, um, hello to, the, we need a bit more with the action. But anyway, let's get rid of that there, save that. There we go, fine, done. Now, the error that we get is service say has no handler for hello. Now, Let's add a handler. In fact, the documentation says, add a handler. There we go, let's do that. Now, the documentation says here, create a file called world.js in the same directory as world.cds. Again, convention, get can have a payload generally. In OData, I'm pretty sure, that's a great, that's a great question, Carter. I'm pretty sure there are <coughs> no circumstances that I've ever come across where you would make a get request as in you would make you know, what does get translate into or what does what do odata operation what are the odata operations that translate into the http method get they are um uh read and query there are no circumstances that i can think of at all in odata where a read or a query operation would require you to send any information in the body of the http request so the answer basically is well technically it can but no it doesn't christoph um, I mean, yeah, so Christoph is saying the same thing, but actually I did look into this once. You can actually send a payload in get. It's, you know, it doesn't make any sense, but technically you can in an HTTP request, but you wouldn't want to, and it doesn't make any sense, and you definitely don't want to in OData. So let's, let's implement this. Let me go here. Now, the other thing is, why is it in the same, let's just add this here. Ah, 
is that another thing? Let's go down here. Uh, no, let's not do that. So let's not do that. Let's just do it here. Uh, create a file. Where is it? Services. Yeah, create a file. New file. Services.js. Let's bang that in there. Save that. There we go. Refresh. Now, the fact that we put it in a file with the same name as the um, CDS file, conventional reconfiguration, cat will do the right thing. If we were, for example, to say, move services.js to banana.js, right? And rerun that, no handler, right? Because it's saying, well, I, you know, I don't know where the handler is, but we can, we can annotate this by to say, Impl, we can, you know, convention over configuration, but you can change anything and everything if you really want to. Impl banana.js. There we go. Is that how we do it? I can't remember. Oh, sorry. Put it in the wrong place. Service there. Uh, at Impl there. Save that. Now, the implementation for this service is in a file called banana.js. Let's, I don't know if it was running about. There we go. And there we go. So we, just basically experiment. Don't be scared to make mistakes. You can't make mistakes. We're at the top of the hour. So let's continue this next uh, episode. Um, we've got so much more to cover in the CDS watch. We haven't even begun to look at all the different log output records, but let me know if this has been helpful. Let me know if this is like too rambly. Uh, just, just direct me. Um, you know, I don't know what to say. Uh, yeah, I just want to say whatever comes out of my brain, um, but try it out. Go and play with it start feeling comfortable with it. It's amazing. See you next time. Bye for now. Thanks for joining.